Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Mindset Mondays with Roseanne and Jenny. I am Roseanne, and I'm from Yuma, Arizona, and I'm an enrollment and client journey coach inside one of our alcohol-free lifestyle programs called Project 90. And I'm Jenny, and I'm in Northern Ireland, and I'm the community manager for the 30-Day No Alcohol Challenge program. Hi, Jenny. Welcome. I Hi. want welcome. It's just like our thing, right? There, it's our date on Mondays. <laughs> so, it's nice to have a date with you every Monday. It's um, the closest thing to a date I ever get, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're broadcasting this on Facebook Live across a multiple of public and private platforms. And we're also recording this for our podcast listeners who will be listening to it next Monday. If um, if you're listening to our podcast, um, make sure that you uh, know that you can access these Facebook Lives through one of our Facebook uh, pages that is open and not private called Alcohol Free Lifestyle. Um, if you'd like to know more about Jenny or me, please feel free to tune in to our alcohol-free podcast available on iTunes and Spotify, Google Pod Podcasts, Stitcher, and YouTube. My story is can be found on episode 19 and Jenny's is on episode 39. There's also a multiple a multitude of stories and interviews there for you um, to be inspired. Uh, before we get started, I want to offer you some free stuff by way of the Alcohol Freedom Formula Guide. This resource will be available below in the chat for those of you watching on Facebook live broadcasts. And uh, if you're listening to us on the podcast, there'll be instructions about how to gain access to that guide after the show is over. Uh, today, I am going to hand um, this over to my friend Jenny, who is nine months alcohol free today. Woohoo! Uh, I have clappers. Wait. I've, I've got my Union Jack in, in case this, this will get a special wave anytime someone's watching from the UK. <laughs> uh, okay, we, we need to recruit from the UK. We actually have a lot of people in our programs from the UK, but we haven't found them on Facebook Live yet. No, um, no. Anyway, Jenny today is going to be talking about how to fill the void of when you go alcohol free. Thank you to Marta for posing this question. We really appreciate our listeners um, just uh pinging in us and giving us content. That's really the most valuable way um, for us to engage with you. So off to you, Jenny. Thank you, Roseanne. Yes, thank you, Marta, for this question. It's a really good one. I think especially at the moment when a lot of us are in lockdown, it's quite easy to get that boredom, blah kind of feeling. Um, and, you know, when you stop drinking, it actually takes a little bit of time for normal life to start filling that void, as we have called it. Um, but when you think about it, actually, what is more boring than sitting on the TV, drinking yourself into oblivion, and then not having the energy or the focus to do anything the next day? Really, what's more boring than nursing a hangover? Um, I don't know about you, Roseanne, but since I have been alcohol-free, I have just had so much more time, so much more energy, you know, in the last nine months, I've set up a business, I've started volunteering, I've got involved in the 30-day community, I've completely redecorated my bedroom, I've upcycled, <laughs> I've upcycled some furniture. I mean, I've just, I've just had the energy to, to do things. And um, if you're looking at the bags under my eyes, you can tell that I, I would give my right arm for a bit of boredom at the minute. Um, so yeah. yeah, so I mean, what about you, Roseanne? What have you done in the last year? Um, and what do you see people doing on Project 90? Because that's where you see big changes. Yeah, it, it's interesting because this topic has been coming up a lot inside Project 90, the, the boredom aspect, and I can share with you on that. But it made me reflect on my own journey. Um, in my own journey, uh, well, let's just talk about when I was drinking because it used to start – every night at six, seven o'clock at night. And I turn on the TV and pour my wine 
And so it would begin all night in front of the TV, <laughs> every night. As a matter of fact, I have, oh, my phone's not by me, but I can quote by memory. Um, the time that I spent drinking on the app that I'm tracking, I'm almost on my year tomorrow. Yay. Um, but I have saved just drinking, not recovering from hangovers, just drinking time, yeah. 1,020 hours over that year. Wow. I've gained. So wow. anyway, just reflecting on that thing. So I used to sit in front of the TV and I don't know, I must have started doing other things because now I barely get to watch TV an hour a week. I actually have to force myself mm -hmm. to put on the news to just get some, you know, some form of entertainment. So mm -hmm. I've definitely filled it up with reading, cleaning the kitchen, calling friends, making plans for the next day. Yeah, I don't even know. All I know is my life looks a lot like yours. It's, it's, it's filled um, it's filled up during COVID, which is interesting too. Um, I feel um, just complete other than dying and wanting to get out of the house due to COVID, but yeah, filled up lots of time. Do you want me to go on to the Project 90 stuff? Yeah, please, please. Yeah, some of the things I've heard about in Project 90 that people do, There's, we have a young man in there, and um, I thought this was very sweet. When he first started his journey, he said he was really bored, so he decided to start cooking dinner for his wife. <laughs> that sounds like a really great thing. <laughs> Like, so, uh, yeah, um, that's how he solved his. A lot of people take up exercise because yeah. when we're drinking a lot, we're just unmotivated. Um, so, you know, whether it's a morning walk or an afternoon walk, uh, just um, doing anything um, to take away that time. What other things? My sister, actually, I remember this. She quit smoking, oh, God, decades ago. She used to do jumping jacks. Like, I, I suppose that's a, you know, anything to take away from the focus of the drinking, right? Mm -hmm. Some people, like you say, maybe refinish furnishings, start painting. Um, some people are taking up an instrument, um, playing playing more with their kids. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of endless, right? Volunteering. I volunteer yeah. more. I definitely volunteer more. So, um, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I, I actually look for my self-care time more now. Um, definitely not bored, but. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just think because you have the energy and, and the clarity, you can be bothered to do things. I think for me, part of the whole drinking nursing the hangover cycle was I just couldn't be there were plenty of things I could be doing and should be doing and I just couldn't be bothered and then I wondered why I was bored but you know Rosanna I was thinking about the the other side of the equation which is sometimes a bit of boredom is not a bad thing um if you look at lots of psychology research will say that boredom is it's actually quite important in terms of your creativity it's important in terms of your mental health and your well-being. Actually, daydreaming is a really, really healthy activity. Um, and I always remember Coach Kevin on Project 90 saying that, you know, life is life's a bit like a symphony. So there are high notes and we all know there are low notes, but there are pauses. And that's all part of the cadence. And, you know, sometimes, and I think it was the, the wonderful Danny from Project 90, who mm -hmm. said, sometimes just being is doing. You know, it's okay sometimes to just sit and, and be. Um, and, you know, any great creative person ever will tell you that boredom is an essential part of the creative process. Put a little bit of words worth here. You know, what is this world? It's full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. And, and sometimes just that, that moment of boredom, that moment of nothingness is what gives us a little break and a little, a little respite and, and then ready to move on to the next thing. So I wouldn't knock boredom in and of itself. 
Um, and I think it's really good for us to take time for ourselves. And I think any of us who are going through this alcohol food journey really start to understand the importance of self-care. Um, you'd, you'd agree with that, wouldn't you, Roseanne? I know baths are a big thing for you now, as they are for me. Yeah, no, I never used to do, because, you know, I, again, I quit during uh, the height of COVID and March 9th of last year. And, um, you know, being inside by yourself, it's kind of tough. Um, but um, it, just learning to sit, I, I think I accomplish a lot of things at once sometimes when I even do the bath because I, I listen to Audible. And so I'm kind of listening and filling my mind with something and learning something. I'm relaxing. I feel it costs no money, yet I feel like I'm taking care of myself. And and I, I just think for those that are parents and um, running a business or working, there's just you're always running to something else. And when you free up those hours, that's why it is a, a big question. I mean, in the enrollment calls, you're like, when am I going to find the time to even do this? I go, oh, trust me, you're going to have so much more time in your day. Um, and that's kind of what happens as we develop more time in our day. Um, yeah. I mean, I remember when I was in Project 90, I basically went on because I knew I needed that level of support. I went on every single call. So that was 90 minutes on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Thursday, a Friday, plus my one-to-one -one with Kevin on a Wednesday Now, Where in the name of goodness would I have found the time to do that had I still you know, been, been drinking? And yet... I was able to carve out quite a lot of hours every week um, just because I, I have the space to do it. So, um, yeah, it's just amazing how much time it brings up. And I do think it's really important that quite a lot of that time, especially in the early days, is, is spent on self-care because I think when you're drinking, you not only are you not looking after yourself, but you tend to put yourself right at the bottom of the pile Maybe because you feel a bit guilty, you feel a bit ashamed, you don't like yourself very much. I certainly find that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one of, the, excuse me, one of the upshots of that is you just don't look after yourself full stop. And, and just having the time to do that and taking the time to do that is really, really important. Right. And I'm thinking out loud here because our conversation has sparked some thought for myself. I, do you think there's a difference between how you keep busy in the front end, the two, first two weeks to a month versus how you keep busy after? Because, and the reason I ask that is when we stop and we sit and we reflect and we're calm, Sometimes we're with those thoughts <laughs> that we were trying to avoid, yeah. and that's the reason we drank. And and I don't know the answer to this, so I'm asking you. Here's where I'm leaning. In the in the beginning, I'm thinking busyness yeah. is good, yeah. distraction, exercise, cook dinner, whatever, because. You need to just keep that busyness going while your body is detoxing. And then you focus on the <laughs> the things that, you know, the stress and the triggers and the, you know, uh, doing. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I, I completely agree. I think that's a, a brilliant point. I think the first few weeks, actually, yeah, keep yourself busy. Exercise treats, being good to yourself, distractions, whether that's reading, audio, uh, books, sugar, <laughs> sugar, chocolate. <laughs> it does it doesn't matter. Just yeah, <laughs> keep yourself busy in the first two weeks and and don't worry about the the bigger thoughts. If you can, you know, all you need to do in those first few weeks in particular is not pick up a glass and do whatever it takes. To achieve that and then you'll find as that start I certainly find as it starts that starts to become a bit easier um yeah what happens the feelings start to come because when you're when you're drinking you're numbing the bad feelings as well as the good feelings that that's why a lot of us drank in the first place I certainly was drinking to take the edge off the the pain around my husband's illness and so on so those those feelings start to come to the surface in a much more raw way. 
and right. the time will come when you have to deal with those. But in the early days, I, you know, my mantra for everyone in the early days is just be kind to yourself. Treat treat your your being alcohol free like you treat a little a little chicken that's just hatched. Do anything and everything to stop it getting squished. Just protect, protect, protect. And the bigger stuff will come in due course. Right. No, I, I agree. I um it's knowing that that habit I was uh I did a um I did a uh, Marco Polo on Project 90. And I'm a very, uh, for those of you watching, I'm going to do something. And, and it's just like more, more flow charty because that's kind of how I get things. So you start, if I start my finger at the top, trigger, then I move here, thought, then I move there, drink, trigger, thought, drink, trigger, thought, drink. So I'm just moving my finger from left to right to left. But what I'm trying to do when I engage in something else is trigger thought, do something different, <laughs> trigger thought, do something different. Imagine a straight line, I guess, instead of a zigzag line. Mm -hmm. So it's developing that neural pathway that gets to me more and more comfortable. And what I was trying to tell people in Marco Polo, be, you know, you're at nine months, I'm a, almost a year. Um, it, it works. I couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine going to a party, having my friends, going to Vegas, doing a river trip without alcohol, because that's what it. And now I can't I can't wait to do it without. I. It's crazy when you can adjust your, you know, when you can adjust your frame of mind and know that this isn't a character flaw, it's a habit <laughs> that needs to be worked on and broken. So um, it, it takes a little bit of time. And, you know, I see people in the 30 day community, you know, all the time start struggling with the early days because it's not easy because you're trying to change a very, very, very ingrained habit um gordon just posted a comment to say um uh he's envious and um, you know if anyone is envious that we're sitting here on nine months alcohol free rosanna's a year alcohol free come on board come on board it it will come i mean you know the oh, first few weeks i have, week, to, I have first, to interrupt you i'm going to interrupt you because the stiff upper lip girl is now having fun. Like you were, you were joking just. I got to wave my flag again, <laughs> just because I can. <laughs> no, it just it gives you it does it gives you this freedom to just be yourself and not be embarrassed or worry about who it was. But you know, I, yeah, I just I'm sorry, I, I I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I just thought it was cute how you're just having more and more fun, and you can. Definitely see that it's just freeing, you know, it's just freeing. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the, the thing is that the first the first few weeks are the hardest. And and what is is heartbreaking is to see people and, and you know, I can say this because this was me going back to day one again and again and again. And it's days one, two, three, four, five, six. 25 that are the hardest once you break through that barrier it, it just starts to open up and, and i suppose because you are retraining your brain it starts to get easier i was asking any tips or tricks to avoid missing missing my habit of being drunk again that's a really good question ivan thank you you know i think we you know why did we drink we felt we were getting something out of it and sure, maybe that first drink, the first couple of drinks, you start to get that little warm, fuzzy feeling. You feel the, the, the edge being taken off your anxiety, whatever it is. But I would just always say to people, play the video through to the end. So mm, like it might be OK for half an hour. And then what happens? You have another drink. You have another one. You have another one. I'm speaking completely from personal experience. You know, I'm someone for whom one was too many and 10 wasn't enough. So I couldn't stop once I'd started. And then end of the night, 
wretched, next day, wretched. So just play that video through to the end. Force yourself to see what the outcome of that initial drink is going to be. And yeah. just try and see that bigger picture. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach it a different way and uh, just okay. add to it, I guess. Um, add to what you're saying, because I agree, playing that video to the end is probably one of the most important points before you make that decision point. But um, the other things I can add uh, for Ivan is, one, do you want to continue doing what you're doing? Is the fr friendship important? Because James always talks about the attitude you're going in with. Like, I want to have fun. Don't go, oh, I'm not drinking. I can't drink. Like, uh, you know, it's, I forget what percentage he says. It's 60 or 70% of how you say it. Hey, I'm giving it a break, man. Yeah. I, I'm here. Like, I'm having fun. Like, you know, fake it till you feel it because you will feel it. Um, at first, it's uncomfortable, but hey, just I'm just giving this a shot for 90 days. See how it feels. Like, go, go for it. I'll be designated driver. Like, woohoo. Like, isn't that cool? And it's really about your attitude shift and just forcing it and forcing it because you can't be a wet rag. It, Otherwise, that's how you're going to feel. Because remember, it's a mindset shift, and the, and it does happen with practice. And, and to be honest, Rosanne, anyone who's Sonia, hey, Tuesday morning to you. Sonia is doing so well, alcohol free. I can't actually keep up with um, her her day counting. <laughs> she's she's just rocking it. Awesome. But um. Um, yeah, you know, it's I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. So I know, know that's what... <laughs> that's the trouble when you pick up people's comments; it destroys your train of thought. Sonia's on day fifty-two. Well, that you know, there there you go. And and once you get through the first few weeks, it just gets easier and easier because, as we keep saying, you're retraining your mind, and and it it is about attitude it's so much about attitude and you know what alcohol hasn't been serving you anyone who's watching this anyone who's part of any of our programs is there because they have realized that alcohol in one way shape or form hasn't been serving them so why not give the alternative a go give it 30 days give it 60 days give it 90 days and i promise you as you know all too well as well as i'm what you see on the other side is is just more than you can probably imagine at this particular point. And Cora is on ten days of alcohol free. Cora, you've got you've got the worst bit behind you. That's fabulous. Keep yeah, going. Well, you've well, you've well, done well. the tough stuff. I'm going to add one more thought to Ivan's question, and then we can close it down too because we are running out of time. But um, the other thing, Ivan, that you can consider is two different strategies. One is to avoid those triggers. Uh, for you and the first part of your journey, whether that's two weeks, three weeks, a month, and build up that mental mindset um, and it, feel and experience the power and how you're feeling without drinking. So get those triggers out of your life and then introduce them with positivity. And that will help you kind of go longer term. So any Final thoughts. Um, thank you, Victor. Victor is uh, motivated by being alcohol free. Good. That's what we want. We want people to motivate. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I love the fact, I mean, I see pictures um, uh, p coming in from people that are very young. And I just love it that the, the younger people are realizing um, this isn't, uh, this isn't, um, the way to live life. Uh, Danny says intuition and insight. Oops, sorry, Danny, I lost you. <laughs> okay, intuition and insight comes from the quieter, wiser, blue sky place of our thinking. I think that's absolutely right. I think we have to just sometimes have time to be, not even to be thinking specifically about anything. That for me is is when the, the good ideas come through. So, right. yeah, you know, boredom doesn't have to be a bad thing. But in the early days, keep yourself busy and distract yourself um, and be very, very kind to yourself. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Well, Jenny, for this week, um, I uh, I am going to congratulate you as Cassandra is too. Nine months thank off all three today. Woohoo! Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming in and remind you um, that we need questions for content. We can always make questions up. We're pretty good at. <laughs> I mean, we, we can, but it's it's a much better coming from you all. So um, anyway, if you have any more in, in interest in talking about Project 90 and how we help people um, change their relationship with alcohol over 90 days, Melanie is on the side and she's posting a link um, uh, to get on my schedule. Uh, also, if you're listening to the podcast, you'll hear uh, a commercial that gives you access to a link and how to um, book a call and make an appointment. Um, anyway, uh, we have some wonderful coaches waiting for you to, to talk to you how you can um, change your life um, for the positive. And Jenny and I are here to, to vouch for it, right? <laughs> So, all right, everybody, uh, until next week. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>